Let's go to Darby in Buckeye, Arizona. What's up, Darby? Hi, John. Thanks for taking my call. Of course. What's up? Um, I just had some questions about how to talk to my grandkids about their mother um, choosing drugs and being homeless instead of um, taking care of them. Yikes. That's tough. It is tough. Are you grandma? I am. Yes. What happened in your daughter's life that made drugs the best solution that she feels like will get her through her day? Um, things that I can think of, cause I've thought about this a lot, um, is her, um, biological father just kind of really didn't want a whole lot to do with her. Um, more so, um, just kind of, you know, she would go for a visit, but didn't really do much with her. Y'all divorced? Yes. Yes, long ago when she was nine months old okay. um, is when her dad left. Was your pregnancy pretty traumatic, pretty stressful? Oh, very much, yeah. very much. And that's the that's the biggest thing that I can think of. And then she had gone through um, some troubles with, I, I remarried when she was five and we're still married today. And um, we had a problem with my husband's brother, and he was um, inappropriately touching her. So we had to go through that whole thing, and she did some counseling. But she's just kind of always... Darby. Always looking. Darby, Darby, Darby. (laughs) What? That's not kind of a problem with my husband's brother. Yeah, it was a big deal. It was, and we we definitely didn't sweep it under the rug. I mean, we talked about it, and we did some counseling, but um, that's like that's saying been, Darby. That's like saying a bomb went off, and we didn't just leave it. We like cleaned up some of the glass. That type of ah oh, man. So where, where's her, where's baby's parent, dad? Um, my granddaughter, the oldest one, her dad is in North Dakota. Okay. Well, they're both in North Dakota, but my grandson's never met his dad. He's never been a part of his life. Why not? Um, I've, I've never met him. My daughter had moved to North Dakota um, when she turned 18. And that's when she met um, my granddaughter's father. Why'd she move all the way to North Dakota? Uh, My oldest daughter lived there. Okay. And she just wanted to be on her own, sort of on her own. Well, not at my house. So she moved there. And um, so there was, I don't know exactly everything that was going on while she was away. And so she had um, my granddaughter, and then um, it didn't work out with her, my granddaughter's father, and she met this guy. I have never met him, didn't know him very long. They got married. She didn't even tell me. And then next thing I know, she left him, she's pregnant, and... Um, just not doing well. So we went back to North, we drove over to North Dakota and brought her back. We were living in Washington state at the time and she had the baby in Washington and lived with us. But yeah, we've never met, met his dad. So I think it's really important from right now until the rest of your life is, is, is through. For you to never say, my daughter is choosing drugs over babies. It looks like that. And for you and me who are not struggling with addiction, 
Mm-hmm. That, that algorithm makes sense on paper. But there is a hurt inside of her and a disconnection and a pain that is so profound that the only thing, I, I, I'm trying to think of something minuscule, like a time that my tooth snapped in half um, and a, a root canal I had broke and I had two exposed nerves and I couldn't, I couldn't see. It hurts. It was pain that was in the ball of my foot all the way through my body. And I went in my room and I shut the door and I put my face down and I had like a warm thing on my face and my mouth was swelling up. And when my son came, I was like, get out of my room, get out of here. I can't, I got, I, the pain was so intense. Volume, words, anything. That's inside her soul. Mm-hmm. And so it's not a matter of her waking up and being like, you know what? Screw those kids. I'm getting high. It's just not how that works. I've never in my life met an addict that was like, no, dude, I absolutely hate my kids. I love the state of my life right now. I would much rather be homeless than have a warm, safe place to stay and be with my kids. I've never met that person ever. So if I'm telling a nine and a six-year-old this, I'm telling little kids this, I'm telling a mommy is really, really sick. That's kind of what I've been telling my granddaughter um, for the past three years that she hasn't seen her mom. Yes, that's it. That mommy's really sick right now, and she loves you very much. But nice. right now, she she doesn't love herself, and she's just really sick. I wouldn't even say that and, because listen, part of your, your, those little kids know that half of them is mom. And so any negativity to those kids is negativity directly into their, their little souls. Mommy's really, really sick. Where is she now? She's in Phoenix. Yeah, she she went to rehab um, in March of 2020, but she um, she got caught with with um, drugs mm-hmm. on her possession, so they they kicked her out. Very very common. So, for, for, what, what kind of drugs is she using? What's her drug of choice? I'm not exactly sure. She just says pills. Okay. So it's been kind of a a roller coaster yeah. a bit for definitely for the last three years, and I just can I ask you a devastating hard make, question? What was that? Can I ask you like a, it's a devastatingly hard question? And I don't mean this to be yeah. ugly. I'm 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 act- asking this for facts, okay? Instead of saying, why is she choosing drugs over her kids? Why would she choose homelessness over your house? What is it about your relationship and her relationship with your husband that is less safe than being on the street? I would love to ask her that question. (laughs) Would you be able to hear the answer? Of course, I would definitely hear the answer. Even if it hurt real bad? Oh, yeah. Okay. It's very, very common, especially if she's into opiates, it's very common for there to take multiple rehab stints. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I understand that. Opiates That's work. That's what I've been told. Opiates are, um, if that, if, you know, when someone tells me they're all pilled out, that's usually what it means. They are mm-hmm. chemically very similar to love. It, okay. And man, that's somebody who's in desperate, desperate need of connection. And it's really, really hard to stay connected to an addict, someone who's struggling with addiction. I know that. I know that. I know it personally. It's hard. And there's seasons of like, 
I, I can't be, I'm choosing to keep myself safe. And I'm choosing my boundaries and I'm choosing my relationships, um, safety here. I'm going to create some space. Mm-hmm. The route I've taken in my life is there will never be a moment that you go to sleep that you don't know that I love you. And when you're ready, I'm ready. Yeah, and I'll hear from her every now and then. Mostly, um, I'll hear from her boyfriend's mother, which we got in contact with each other after we discovered that we were there. We, uh, uh, so l- let me just say it this way. That, that plan isn't working. No, but it's the only way I know what what's going on with her would she meet you for breakfast once a month no she won't she won't meet me we've tried that and Mm -hmm. she doesn't show up she says she's going to Mm -hmm. and she doesn't show up okay i saw her one time um i got a hold of her because her number always changes so what works today will not work the next time of course and i met her with some, it was right after Thanksgiving and I met her with some, you know, I told her, Hey, I want, I have some Thanksgiving dinner for you. And she was excited. And we met at a park and, you know, I tell her, you know, I love you so much and I'm here for you. Whenever you want to talk, you can call me, we can meet and we can, I'll take you to dinner. You know, you, you can't come to the house cause I, and I don't know if I'm doing the right thing, but I haven't allowed her to see the kids since she left because she's she's not okay. Yeah. And I don't want her coming and going out of their life, especially my granddaughter. My grandson, he really, really doesn't remember her a whole lot. Yeah, like but his, his body does. His body does. He's He's kind of a different kid. He's got a lot of... His body, um, his body, a lot wound. of issues. Yes. It, yes. Here's the, here's the deal. Um, there's so many complex factors here. When we tell somebody who's really struggling, really, really struggling, let's, let's take, um, um, let's say that your daughter's bar- throwing up. She's barfing everywhere. And she finally comes in and in, in, in y'all meet at the foot of her bed and you say, Hey, you're only allowed in here when you're through barfing. So you stay in here. Don't come out. And when you're done barfing, I'll be ready for you. I'm going to close the door. It keeps barf off of everything. It does. But it makes the work of relational reconnection her problem. The person who's sick makes it their problem. And maybe it's not safe for you to crawl into bed with her. But maybe, again, everything you've tried so far is not working. What if you just decided once a month or once every two weeks, I'm driving over to the local IHOP and I'm just going to sit there. I'm going to text her and let her know, hey, I'm here for our, our breakfast, 730. And go ahead and take a book and some work because she's probably not going to show. And then show up the next week. And then show up the next week. And then show up the week after that. And maybe you're just going to get a whole bunch of work done and get some books read. That'd be cool. Maybe one time she shows up. And you're not going to be there with your advice and your lectures. She's got enough shame. She knows. She knows. There's not a thing you're going to say and she's going to go, ah, I didn't know that. But Lego piece by Lego piece, maybe her body begins to feel safe. And maybe, Darby, none of this works. I don't know. I got a daughter. And I just know I would storm the gates of hell for that little girl. I also know loving somebody who's struggling, struggling with addiction is a nightmare. I know that. So I'm going to keep showing up. I'm going to keep myself safe, keep myself in, in, in my boundaries. I'm going to keep showing up. I'm going to keep showing up. Not with my lectures, not with my advice, but with pancakes. 
and an open heart. And maybe, maybe she'll come too. She's not choosing drugs over her kids. She's trying to stay alive the only broken, crooked way she knows how. And until she learns another way, um, it's going to be a long cycle. See if you can bridge that gap. It's worth a shot.